Hey guys, so today we are going to be going through the second part of what we were discussing in the last video. The last video we were talking about folksonomies and how to use card sorting and how to use you know different methods of extraction for getting the raw terms to create taxonomies, vocabularies, knowledge graphs, doing machine learning, all of those things. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how to identify the pre-existing terminology and vocabularies that are already out there in the world. A word of caution here is that these are pre-made and therefore they don't care, nor do they know what your use case is, who your users are, what their personas are, what the intent behind your assets and your search engine are. So that means that this might be a good you know, clay on the table step, but you will have to whittle down what you need from each of these sources. And we will talk about that in this video. All right, so let's get started. So where people usually start is the government level, free, open access kinds of terminology. So most people start with the Library of Congress subject headings. Now, I think this is a big mistake and here is why. The Library of Congress is meant for libraries. The Library of Congress subject headings are specifically geared towards books, physical, on physical shelves. A lot of people might argue against that, but I would argue back that if you look at the structure of the Library of Congress subject headings, subject headings are just another form of a tag, they are not machine readable and they're really not even human readable anymore either. They're very archaic. And so this might be a good place to start. This is a good place to maybe mine for synonyms or for certain types of terms, but keep in mind, you always wanna keep your end user in mind, your end persona. What is this really going to help with? How is your search engine going to treat these? So with that, let's just go and look at something. So let's say I am looking for something in the technology space. Let's say I wanted to look for an IoT network, things describing IoT network. So I type in IoT and let's see what happens. It knows it's the Internet of Things, but does it understand network? Let's just do network, computer network. Let's see what happens. All right, so there is a lot of computer networks, over 239. So over here, this is how you read this. So over here, you have the different types. Remember, we were talking about authorities, simple types, topics, complex subjects, and complex types. Goes through um, different collections, different dates. So you can use that metadata to help you kind of drill into what you're looking for. So let's just use this computer network architecture. Let's go ahead and select that. That is a topic. So one thing to keep in mind as you're going through any of the uh, any of these is does this have a RESTful API? Does it have an API at all? Does it have a simple download format like a CSV or an OWL file? If it really is just a vocabulary or terminology on the screen, you will have a very hard time using it. That doesn't mean you don't use it. In fact, I've had to make a lot of workarounds to get those kinds of vocabularies and to get those terminologies into the data sets that I have used, and we will go over techniques to do that. But if you are just starting out, I would really recommend finding something that is a linked data structure. There's a lot packed into what that means, but for this conversation, it really just means that can you link to it in an automated fashion and then extract what you need from it? So the Library of Congress does allow you to do that. You can see that these are the schema that it is associated with. It gives you the URIs. Remember, we were talking about that before, which is the unique identifier. Uh, you can see that there are variants. So these are like, what are the synonyms of this thing? It gives you somewhat of a hierarchy. It gives you a broader term and a narrow term. If your intent was to come to the Library of Congress subject headings to search for things that you felt should be in your vocabulary because you already have an idea or you already know what your assets are, this is a good place to start. Just keep in mind, computer network architectures you're going to really need to do some user testing to make sure that is the terminology 
that your users would understand and that your search engine is going to be able to retrieve back for. Library of Congress sometimes has dates and other weird things in their labels that don't play well with search engines. So you wanna make sure that you leave those out uh, for the search engine piece at least. So let's go look at some other governmental places that you might check out. Again, having a domain in mind would be ideal. Library of Congress is kind of spreading across everything, but I know from my own research that it's not very deep. It's pretty good with breadth, but then, um, it doesn't get into really, really specific terminology for specific domains. It also is not as maintained as you might assume. So also keep that in mind. There are a lot of research papers documenting a lot of the ones that I have written, in fact, talking about how the Library of Congress sometimes does not have equitable labels. So what that means is they're outdated or um, they are just not um, correct in the way that they present people or places or things. So be very cautious about that because there are some um, accidental gotchas in here if you're not careful. Okay, so the Getty, if you don't know about the Getty, it's a great resource. Um, they also have linked data. See, it's right here, right on the page. Um, and this one is really talking about um, assets that are of a media nature. So images or videos or artwork uh, in general. Okay, so I type in landscape. Maybe I have a lot of image assets for a museum. Um, or maybe I work for an architectural firm or um, something with blueprints. Finding something about landscapes would be ideal. So I can go in here. I can see the label, which is right here. I can see um, how the hierarchy is structured. I can look at the um, identification. Let's dig into it a little bit more. You can see, wow, there's a lot more information here. So we will be using this one in our live event at the end of this month. So please, if you are interested in making a taxonomy based on jewelry and beads with me, um, at the end of the month, uh, there is a sign up in the bottom of this description. Uh, but this is a really good one to check out because you can see that it's already got a lot of the knowledge graph um, formats that you can use, which is JSON, RDF, Turtle, Triples. Um, you can see that there's a lot of linking going on here. All of those are really good for you if you are really trying to figure out what terminology you want to start with. The reason people usually start with things that are at that, that governmental level is because the government is, is paid for by your taxes and therefore you get to use all of this stuff for free unless you're making money off of it. And then you have to make sure that you're checking the copyright um, information on all of these. Um, but governmental stuff is usually something that if you are just learning how to do something, they are fabulous resources because you can use them for free and they give you lots of tips and tricks and different ways of looking at that information. So let's look at another one that's in the governmental section. And this is also free. And this is the National Library of Medicine. And these are their subject headings. So in library and information science, subject headings are just the tags. Um, that you would find in any other kind of e-commerce source talking about what is this thing about. All right, so let's do a search on the browser here and let's search for just something easy that I know is going to have lots of results. So cancer, so you can go in and look at all the different neoplasms that are out there. Um, it gives you a lot of help in understanding which one you want to early detection of cancer which of these you want to actually click on. So let's do early uh, detection of cancer. Again, early detection of cancer. Should that be a tag on your asset? Should that be a category? There is a difference between categories and the actual taxonomies that we're talking about. And we have a whole video from a guest speaker coming up on that. Um, but for now, just keep in mind that the category is kind of like the rolled up value um, that is, I would say, used the most in interfaces so that you can drill down into the more detailed um, descriptions of things. So here you can see this is the heading or the label. 
You can see where it falls in the tree, which is, you know, the hierarchy. You can see the unique identifier. You can see it already has an RDF triple. Again, that's in the knowledge graph space. Scope notes are telling you how to use this. That's the other thing. A lot of um, terminology is ambiguous. So if you're looking for a pre-made taxonomy or a pre-made term, you probably need to find out if it's being used the same way you think it's being used. So if you look for the word Jupiter and you don't see that the broader term Roman gods, you're not going to realize it doesn't mean Jupiter the planet, it means the Greek deities. So you need to be very careful with that. When you have things like scope notes or definitions, that really helps you because it tells you which context that term is from. So I mentioned Jupiter. Another good example that's used a lot in the research is bank, embankments, water banks, bank financial institutions. Speaking of financial institutions, there is a taxonomy for that that you can go and look at. So this is the FIBO and this again, a lot of these you'll notice are in linked data formats that you can then use for knowledge graph work, which is great. So FIBO is the one um, that is mostly dealing with uh, financial things. And you can see you can go in here and you can actually download that. All right, so now we're getting into the space where we're kind of moving out of the governmental section. And now we're getting into just free open data sets. So a really good one to check out is Wikidata. Wikidata also has a really good API. So let's go and look for Jupiter. So Jupiter, let's go with the Greek deity or the Roman deity. Okay, so you can see a lot of different metadata. By the way, I'm going through a lot of these resources to kind of give you the spectrum of the um, ways that you would go through and find vocabularies and kind of like what you would look for if, if you're looking for additional metadata or how to at least grab the data to do more analysis. We will go over every single one of these in detail in further videos. Okay, so here you're looking at, okay, this has different languages, that's good. Again, understanding who your user is. Are they going to be searching in other languages? That's a really important one. If they are going to be searching in other languages, you need tags that are in those other languages or you need a mapping or a knowledge graph connecting all of those together and we will absolutely go over all of those things in a later video it's too much to go over in one sitting we're already going over a lot already okay so here you can see these are the labels you can see the description again i'm going to know the context this is good Right, so, so far all of these have had descriptions with them, which is good. Uh, also known as, this is great. So all of these have had synonyms, this is good. Um, now this one has some images. So the Getty also has images, um, the other ones do not. Uh, so this is great if you want like a visual context. I'm a strong believer that a visual speaks all languages. Okay, so there is a lot of other detail here. So this tells me if I really wanted a lot of detail and I was going to do a lot of analysis and I was going to have, you know, very intricate uh, different connections between different terms in my vocabulary, whether it's going into a knowledge graph or a taxonomy, this would be a really good one to use. You kind of have to have more validation in place for Wikidata because it is the wisdom of the crowd. It really is all of the Wiki sources out there in the world all assembled together, which is great, but you have to also remember, remember when we talked about Twitter in the last video? It became very bigoted and sexist and all kinds of bad things uh, within a few moments. The same could happen with Wikidata. So just be very careful about that because the world is not such a nice place all the time. All right, so another one that is pretty highly regarded is, is WordNet. All right, so we searched on Jupiter and you can see that it's the largest planet and it also has Roman mythology. So again, I'm looking at the way this is being structured. This is really gonna help us when we get into taxonomy and knowledge graph space. So this is being structured a little differently. So far, all of the other entries that we were looking at had distinct concepts for two different entities, right? Two different contexts or, or more than two different contexts for a term. WordNet actually groups them together. So that's actually 
pretty nice as long as you know that's what it's doing because it's basically done all that mapping for you. So what this would mean is if I'm doing a search and I'm using this data in my search, which by the way, WordNet also does have a REST API, um, it is more, uh, it's got more syntax, it's got more semantic um, language in here. So WordNet is um, a great resource that does kind of go more into the semantic space where it's telling you if something is a subject, a noun, you know, it's doing some of the parts of speech. So it's, it's really um, a great resource for machine learning in general. Um, but you can see that it's, it's doing all of this information, this, this information mapping for you. So if you then used this and then you mapped it to a mesh term, you have to make sure mesh did not map these two things together. So you're going to have to parse this one out if you're mapping it into mesh. So these are the ways that you kind of have to think about um, the terms when you are looking at them. And you have to look at the structure of these vocabularies because they are generic. They're out there in the world for anyone to use. So you really have to then tailor them to your use case. BioPortal is a great one for vocabularies and for, um, for ontologies. So here you can search for an individual class so we already said that a subject heading is what librarians call these, the tags that are on content. Um, when you get into more um, ontological frameworks, they are called classes. So the universal uh, label for this thing. So here, let's look for cancer and go and check out what they have on cancer. Now, this is a little different because it's, it's actually an aggregation of a lot of different vocabularies. So you can go in here and look for all kinds of different um, ontologies. So let's look at this one. Loink. I love it. Okay, so in here you can look at the different classes and then you can look at the metadata. You can see these are highly structured. So it will tell you if there is a REST API or not. And then just like we did an assessment out of all the other vocabularies that we've looked at so far and the terminology that they represent, you're going to want to look at the structure, what metadata is present, how you would use that metadata, all of those things are things that you need to keep in mind as you're doing an assessment. The other thing is, we're not necessarily using all of these as is, right? So you could actually mix and match these according to your use case, which is very helpful. And you might ask yourself, well, that's great, Ashley. Where am I mixing and matching them? So remember in the last video, we said, if you don't have anything else, you can start in just Microsoft Excel is, is, there's no shame there if that's where you start. We will, however, be going over more um, robust ways of documenting those. Um, there are some commercial tools and then there are some that are for free. But if you do want to download any of these, I would recommend using Web Protege or the desktop version of Protege. But what if you really still aren't finding the, the terms, the individual terms that you are interested in? So another trick that I use is going to Google Trends. So if you don't know the word for, you know, what you should be using, you can type in two different search topics and see how prevalent they are in Google search. All right, so now let's type in another version of that, ascorbic acid as a search term. And you can see which term is the most popular on a general web search. So you can see ascorbic acid, which is the more um, medical term for vitamin C, is not typically what people search for on Google. But this does give you a clue if you are trying to find the more common variation of any of these things. I know it was pretty popular for a while is wand. I think these are pretty generic. So just be very careful. So after you get out of this, that's where you get into the space of vendors. There are quite a few vendors that can make taxonomies for you. There are a lot of consultants, people that are, you know, individual people that can make taxonomies for you. Um, I have made taxonomies for many people and ontologies and knowledge graphs. So these are ways that you can go about finding vocabularies, kind of mixing and matching all of these different techniques that we've gone over. Um, 
I would definitely start with, and I think a lot of people do, start with the governmental stuff, go into, you know, the more uh, free and open, then into more like very specific things that you kind of have to do more work with. And then at the very end, figure out what you need to actually pay for. Okay, so there was a lot in that video. It is a little bit longer than normal. Big reason for that is we went over a lot of different mechanisms. So your task for this week is what vocabularies, what, what domain are you looking for? I know quite a lot of resources for a lot of different disciplines. So if I didn't go over something in this video that would really help you out with your taxonomy or knowledge graph work, uh, leave it in the comments below. I can give you some recommendations. If you're looking for vendors or consultants to help you you know, make a brand new taxonomy, just ask um, and you can put it in the comments below. So with that, I want to thank you again for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks everybody.